Back at it, right smack dab in the middle of the week. It is the 17th day of July, 2024. I am Dan Koontz. It's Winning Wednesday. And we don't have that theme anymore. I just remember that. But we're having the time of our life anyway. Winning Wednesday is back. We didn't do it last week because, well, I forgot. There, being honest with you there. And we didn't do it the week before because it was the July holiday. So we're doing it this week. It's Winning Wednesday. And here is the prize. Once again, from our friends at the Anvil Sandwich Company, right along the Columbia River on Riverside Drive, uh, it is a $50 gift card to the Anvil Sandwich Company. It has become a very popular lunch spot for folks who work in the downtown area because it's very convenient. They got great food. They have lunchbox specials to go, so you can, I think, email them in or call them in, and they make all of these box lunches in advance. And they're like 13 bucks, and it has like the sandwich, which is good, and a drink, and a cookie, or something like that. Great for the office if you have to sit at your desk and work during your lunch break. And it's good. For, I can personally attest that their turkey sandwich is good because I've had it more than once. And a $50 gift card is going to buy you a lot of food from the Anvil Sandwich Company. Send in your email. You know how it goes by now. Winner at ncwlife.com. Winner at ncwlife.com. You enter via email. You know by now if you have more than one email address, you can enter more than once. It's one entry per email address. And a lot of people take advantage of this. There's one gentleman, I'm not going to name his name, David. Uh, I'm kind of cheering for David. It's a random draw. David has four email addresses, so he uses all four to enter every week we do it. <laughs> I don't recall ever pulling his name out of the hat. Anyway. Winner at ncwlife.com, employees of uh, local telecommunications and solely broadcasting are not eligible. Sorry, Jose, you cannot win this because you work here and we'll do the drawing tomorrow. So you'll have all day to get your entries in. Winner at ncwlife.com for Winning Wednesday. Again, a $50 gift card to the Anvil Sandwich Company and it is good food. Another warm one, 72 degrees for the last two consecutive weeks now. 14 days in a row, our high temperature has been above normal, and I mean well above normal. We caught a little bit of a break yesterday. We only topped off at 98. You see there's a few more clouds behind me, but we got two things that we don't want this time of the year. One is a red flag warning, and the other is the heat advisory. The red flag warning is a more serious deal because there is the potential of a dry thunderstorm in the very hottest part of the day today. That's so you notice the clouds there. You can get the bugs out of the camera. Get, get, go, go away. Get the bugs out. Anyway, um, we don't think it's going to happen. They say it's only like about a 20% chance of a dry thunderstorm strike, which could obviously strike up a wildfire. But we have the uh, very warm weather forecast, and it's going to just be oppressively hot right through the early part of next week. We're finally going to catch a little bit of break next week, but this has been one really hot July. July is a hot month, but this is, come on, folks. News, got that. The All-Star game last night, uh, American League beat the National League 5-3. to three. The West Coast League All-Star game is tonight, and there are five on Angie Apple Sox playing in tonight's game. We'll preview that. And uh, Eric has a preview, Eric Granstrom has a preview of the big salmon derby, which is this weekend, so you can go out and not only catch fish, but make money doing it. We'll have that in sports. And speaking of sports, Joe Norman, the broadcasting voice of the Bonacci Apple Sox, will give us a mid-season update from the team in the back half of the program. Heads up, the Apple Sox are pretty good. Let's go around the valley with our tour. Of course, there is the Wenatchee Heights camera. Just a few more clouds today than there were yesterday, but it was still plenty warm. We topped off at 98 degrees. That's 10 degrees above normal. Again, 14 consecutive days now, two weeks. We've had our afternoon high temperature well above normal. We've had a number of record high temperatures during this heat wave, and we still have those bugs who seem to be attracted to the lens of that PTZ camera. When we go to the lower Butte camera up in Chelan, you're going to see the smoke from the Pioneer fire, and you're going to go, well, that's not very good. Actually, the air quality this morning is better than it was yesterday at this time. You are at 78 on the AQI scale in Chelan. The, uh, the monitor, by the way, in Chelan is right downtown, right on Wooden Avenue. And so it's, it's right where it's at. So they are at 78 today. That is moderate air quality. So it doesn't look real good, but it's not, it's, you got to remember that camera has got a lot of information in this lens, so it kind of amplifies the haze. It's not as bad, perhaps, as it looks. To jump off ridge, we go and with an unbelievable view of the entire 
Wenatchee Valley, the Stemmel Basin is down below us. The East Wenatchee Bench to the right. Wenatchee on the other side of the Wenatchee Heights area. That abutment that sticks out all the way off to Sunny Slope. You can see the clouds. They are high. They're up there in the sky quite a ways. And that's what we see right now. It's pretty much what we're going to have all day today. And let's head on down to the Wahadas camera. This is down near Royal City. It's quite a ways from us, but it's another one of those cameras that gives you just a ginormous view. You can see a little sliver of the Columbia River on the left side of your screen and a lot of dry burnout real estate. Keep your fingers crossed because the Columbia Basin, if anybody's going to get a dry lightning strike today, it's going to be out in the Columbia Basin. We may sneak past this. Two slides to show for you. I hate this one. Red flag warning. Yeah, it's no good. You know what red flag warnings mean. It's going to, it's hot and dry. We are in a drought. Fires that already exist could get going. I'm talking about you, the Pioneer Fire, and any new fires that start could get going. Again, the, uh, it's, a, it's a matter of a, of a thunderstorm with no associated rainfall. And that is not good. Once again, that upper level ridge is positioned just to the east of us. It's basically over northwest Montana. It's continuing to spin around, grabbing all that warm, hot southwest air and bringing it right up here, which is why temperatures are on the hot side and we have a heat advisory. This is pretty much the same map we showed you yesterday. If you live in that area, which is pretty much everybody, you're under a heat advisory. Down in Yakima, it's even worse. Yakima and Ellensburg definitely could set some records today. We could definitely set some records this weekend from the National Weather Service. Partly sunny, but hot. A high of 103, our record high today, 105. That was set back in 1960. 71 for the overnight low tonight with a couple of clouds. So today is going to be the cloudiest day of the forecast period. There's just a weak short wave that's sliding in over the top of the ridge of high pressure that's dominating our weather. Then it's reestablished tomorrow, 104. Our forecast high Thursday, the record high for Thursday, 106. That was set back in 1960. A little bit of a break on Friday, only 101. That's plenty hot for most people. Look at Saturday and Sunday, 105 on Saturday for afternoon high. If we get there, that would tie the record high of 105. That was set back in 1979. And on Sunday, 107, which would be a new record high. The record high on Sunday is 105. That was set back in 1994. But look, by Tuesday, it'll only be in the mid-90s. It'll only be very, very warm as opposed to really, really hot. No relief in the in sight. Hopefully no lightning either. Going to take a break and have the news when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Live channel. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, located on South Wenatchee Ave, has the largest selection of spas and swim spas in town. Stay cool this summer in an artesian swim spa and use it all year long. We enjoy helping families reconnect one spa at a time. Hot tubs are proven to improve sleep and decrease arthritis pain. Our passion is water, so please bring us a water sample and we will help you diagnose your pool or spa water for free. Blue Lagoon Pool and Spa, your pool and spa experts. The family at the Epladolin want to help your loved one feel at ease in their new home environment. Epladolin offers beautiful one bedroom and studio apartments. Residents enjoy three delicious home style meals a day, laundry service, housekeeping service, and encouragement to make themselves cozy in their new home. Epladolin welcomes your family to come and visit their family. Epladolin, independent and assisted living. They make the complicated easy for you. Call today for a tour. As sheriff, I arrested rioters, rapists, and mass murderers, locked up human traffickers who preyed on women and children. On my watch, everyone was accountable. Despite being the attorney general for 12 years, Bob Ferguson does not take responsibility for the rapid increase in crime and homelessness, businesses moving out of state, and jobs lost. And he thinks he deserves a promotion? Dave Reichert. At Confluence Health, our mission is clear, to provide exceptional care for our community. We believe in healthcare that's personal and local because we're just like you, members of this great community. We are Confluence. Local care by and for our community. Local care by and for our community. 
local care by and for our community. We are Confluence. High clouds, as you can see, 72 degrees, triple digits today with some floating high clouds. Nothing but sunshine returns on Thursday. Sunny and hot, triple digit highs right through the early part of next week. And we have a red flag warning up and running today. It's 10 minutes after the hour. The man who fired shots into the Wenatchee VA clinic uh, and was later, of course, wounded by police. Well, that man pled guilty Monday to property damage and a firearms related misdemeanor. He'll be sentenced to mental health treatment. 54-year-old Troy Allen McMaster of East Wenatchee fired a handgun last December into the doors and the windows of the Bud Link VA Outpatient Center in Old Station while in the midst of a mental health crisis. Responding officers shot and wounded McMaster several times after stopping his vehicle on East Mott Avenue after he allegedly refused to disarm himself. Nobody was hurt by McMaster's gunfire, which caused about $25,000 in damages. He pled guilty to Melissa's mischief and aiming or discharging a firearm. Schlein County Superior Court Judge Robert Jordan is expected to sentence him September 4th to a mental health program plus probation. On Monday night, the city of Wenatchee hosted an open house on the Confluence Parkway project. Going to run about $134 million. Of course, they want to create a second bridge across the Wenatchee River and a bypass through the busy corridor on North Wenatchee Avenue. City engineer and project manager Jake Lewing gave a presentation on the status of the project and highlighted a change in the design plans. That change will spare both Denny's and the Igloo Tavern, which were previously scheduled for demolition or relocation. The previous environmental documents showed an underpass at the north end of Confluence Parkway as you approach the Maple Street intersection. Now there's going to be an overpass across the train tracks. Uh, this might look different than what the environmental docs originally showed, which was another underpass here. Uh, the switch to an overpass really helped uh, reduce some of the impacts to the adjacent owners um, with this type of construction. Uh, it avoided relocation of some really significant utilities, including the uh, regional water main, which serves water to the entire Wenatchee Valley, uh, as well as some other utilities such as sewer, uh, storm, um, gas, and, and power. Um, you know, I do want to pause and recognize that uh, the last statement, uh, I want to recognize that there are still impacts to private properties along this portion, and we are working with owners um, to try to minimize those, but just want to recognize that those are still part of this project to, to widen the roadway. And uh, we will, including with staff just about the project, we do have right-of-way staff here available afterwards that, uh, to answer questions about the process, anything you might have. Um, and would, would love for you to come up and talk to us afterwards. As a result of the switch from an underpass to an overpass, the Wenatchee Denny's will be able to stay put in the location it has held since it was originally built in the 1960s. The updated design plans also end the perimeter of the affected area just short of the igloo, a local bar, allowing longtime owner Bill Mickelson to maintain the business in its current location. We're going to be staying. Uh, we're fortunate enough to be beyond the southern portion of the Confluence Parkway project, and we should be staying. We should be there for a long time yet. Perfect. How does okay. that make you feel? When did you find out about that? Just a little bit ago. A few oh, minutes. you found out here? Yeah. Does this yes. mean you're going to continue your plans to pass it on to your son someday? Yes, we will. Yeah, in fact, your son is here, and he just heard it, too, that we should be fine to continue where we're at. The city is scheduled to break ground on phase one of the project in the late spring of 2025. Phase one will include a new bridge over the BNSF Railway at North Miller Street, as well as a new bridge under the railway on McKittrick Street. A new roundabout will be built to intersect the two streets. The Schlein County PUD is considering new ways to charge those customers that use a lot of electricity. The PUD staff recently recommended three framework options that would service customers like data centers, manufacturing plants, and other power intensive operations while recovering the cost of both power and delivery. The three framework options include buying wholesale market energy and then reselling it to the customers, allowing the customer to identify and procure the energy or negotiating 
a contract consistent with its current wholesale energy marketing strategy. Public comments on the three framework options can be submitted by email to the PUD. Now through August 1st, comments will be reviewed at the commissioner's meeting on August 5th. The Community Foundation in North Central Washington has awarded $100,000 from the 2024 Medhow Valley Game Changer Grant to Medhow Trails. It's a nonprofit ski complex. The grant aims to fund projects by nonprofit organizations that will have, quote, game changing, end quote, impacts on the Medhow Valley. Medhow Trails plans to use the funds to renovate a trail that's used a lot through Club Creek. It's currently undersized and doesn't have the proper amenities. The grant's also going to be used as a match to allow Medhow Trails to receive funding from the State Recreation and Conservation Office to start construction on the trailhead. Wenatchee High School's Mariachi Hanachi earned first place at a national conference in Albuquerque last week. The Mariachi Spectacular Conference was held from July 10th to the 13th. It's the same competition the group got second place last year. Director Eduardo Cortez Solerio said about five students from that ensemble were part of this year's first place finish. Leading up to the competition, the students went to rehearsals twice a week and watched last year's performances to identify areas for growth. Mariachi Hanachi competed against three other high schools in the conference, including university and open categories. And today is part three in their final look at Palisades rancher Molly Linville, who operates 6,000 acres of cattle land out in the Moses Cooley area. When she and her husband inherited the KV Ranch, Molly saw potential for improving the health of the soil and along the way turned a conventional farming operation into a more healthy place for cows. You can find the full video and interview with Molly on our website, by the way. It's well worth your time. Here's the final part of our visit to Molly's Ranch. We, at that time, were um, farming the irrigated ground pretty traditionally. We were mostly raising alfalfa hay and when we first got here, we actually had um, a farmer who was doing the farming for us and um, did a great job and no complaints there, but it was inputs like fertilizer and herbicides and that gets really expensive. I um, have turned those irrigated circles into perennial pastures. And so now the cows are here during the growing season and then they can be out on the range ground on that good grass out there um, when it's dormant because when it's dormant um, you don't damage the grasses um, because they're not they're not like they don't get bitten off and then try to hurry and and grow back they just get bitten off and there's nothing you know and then the cows move on naturally so i've changed things around so that um i can use both but uh in the in and this is i can run twice as many cows on this irrigated ground as I could have out on the range ground. So even though it's much smaller acreages. After we changed from sort of, you know, a, an alfalfa operation um, to just grazing, the grass that I seeded out here uh, didn't look great. <laughs> and I was like, oh my gosh, because the nutrients had already been sort of sucked out of the ground. And so then I, when I started, you know, the, as you can see, the cows are close together and, and um, started rotationally grazing the cows through. So their manure added organic matter back to the soil. Grass needs a disturbance. Like it needs to either be burned or nipped or mowed or something for it to signal to grow again. And so that them eating the grass and then me giving the grass time to came, come back um, made these pastures just really come back to life. And we're learning a lot about like the, the biology and the soil. And for example, cow's saliva has bacteria in it that's important for um, the microbes in the ground. Really? Yeah, and it's a, sim it's a very symbiotic relationship. And so if you don't have that microbial activity in the, in the soils, um, you, you don't have, you know, good growth from grass. And so um, it's been really fun watching this place spring back to life. When those fields started getting healthier, and by healthier, I mean a wide range of plant species that are out there, the first thing that came back was amphibians that I hadn't seen since I had gotten here. And, you know, there's, we had woodhouse toads, 
We have um, salamanders, we have uh, tree frogs, we have all kinds of amphibians, and they're always kind of the canary in the coal mine, right, to tell you that you've got something wrong. So to see them come back with doing nothing other than not putting chemical inputs out there and seeding it into grasses was pretty exciting to me. With the cattle specifically, we're seeing much higher weaning rates on the calves. Um, one thing, and we can measure some of that, which is nice, so it's not just a sort of a, a sense of it. The butter fat in these cow's milk, even in the beef cow's milk, is way higher on these diverse pasture mixes that they're eating on out here. And so higher butter content in milk creates a bigger calf every time. And um, and that you just don't get if you're feeding hay or silage. Um, and so there's that benefit. The moms are in such good condition that they breed back very well every year. So you get higher conception rates um, when the nutrients are high. And that's really important to your bottom line um, to make sure that you get every one of those cows bred because, you know, that's, that's a basically year long process. And so if you get to the end of that year and you don't get a calf out of that cow, well, she's just cost you a bunch of money without giving back. And so um, being able to increase those is really important to your bottom line as a rancher. And that is the news on this Wednesday. Once again, the complete profile of Molly Linville and her ranch can be seen on our website, ncwlife.com. So can our news, if you can't watch it tonight at 5, 6, or 10 on television, 5, 6, or 10, it'll be on our website, ncwlife.com. Our news will be up and running at 5 o'clock on our Facebook page, our YouTube page, any other random page you can think of. And that, my friends, is how you download the app. You pick up your smartphone and QR away. If there's something out there that's newsworthy, you get a hold of us. News at ncwlife.com. Let's go fishing. Sports is one minute away. You're watching Wake Up in Anchee Valley on the NCW Life channel. My favorite thing about living at Prestige is the activities. I think it's just so good for you to have a group that you can have fun with. I think if you keep moving and you have a social life, you're going to live longer. And that attitude is fostered by the activity director and the managers. It's a good place, it's a happy place, and it's where I plan to stay forever. Me too. My name's Nick Dirk, and I've been a cinematographer photographer for over 10 years. I got my start at the Wenatchee Valley Technical Skills Center. Without the Tech Center, I wouldn't have got my first job in media production three months after I graduated high school. My name is Charlie Voris, and I own Vortex Productions. My work has taken me on exciting adventures all around the world, and I got my start at Wenatchee Valley Tech. Hey, my name is Oli Mingo, and I'm the executive director at Heirloom Creatives in Wenatchee. I am so thankful for Wenatchee Valley Tech to be able to have my dream career. Sports at 24 minutes after the hour. Jaron Duran's tie-breaking two-run home run in the bottom of the fifth was the difference. The American League All-Stars beat the National League All-Stars 5-3 last night at Globe Life Field in Arlington. Oakland righty Mason Miller got the win. And Cleveland closer Emmanuel Classe struck out two in the ninth for the save. The AL beat CNL for his 10th win in the past 11 games. Closer to home, five players will represent the Wenatchee Apple Sox at the 2024 West Coast League All-Star Game. That's tonight at Joe Martin Field in Bellingham. It'll be Garrett A. Hearn, Evan Canfield, Jonathan Fitz, Max Hartman, and Quincy Vassar. They'll suit up for the North Division. It's the first All-Star Game in the WCL since 2019. Jack Hafferkamp was added to participate in the All-Star Skills Showcase. That will be prior to tonight's game. Camfield is not available to pitch in the game because of an injury, and Ahern was added as a replacement on Sunday. Tonight's WCL All-Star Game, 6.35 p.m. It'll be televised on the MLB Network, and if you don't have the MLB Network, you can stream it on MLB TV or MLB.com. And anglers, not only do you have a chance to catch some big fish around the Wenatchee Valley this weekend, you may make money doing it. That's cool. Eric Granstrom caught up with one of the organizers of the Wenatchee Salmon Derby for this very program. 
Well, good morning, Dan, and welcome to the Columbia River, and welcome Bobby Loomis, who is the Director of Sales and Marketing for Max Lure, but also you are a bigwig with the CCA, right? Well, I don't know about a bigwig, <laughs> but, you know, I, I'm the uh, chapter president up here in North Central Washington for CCA. We're talking about the Coastal Conservation Association. Uh, you've got uh, Salmon Derby coming up this weekend. Tell us about the idea behind the Salmon Derby. It's been going on for quite a while now. Yeah, this is the 11th year that we'll have put this on and uh, part of the reason that, that we started it was because of the fact we wanted to do something a little bit different than banquets and you know things of that nature that, that everybody else does we wanted to create another source uh, of getting people out there and getting people involved and part of the whole thought process is uh, you know if you if you buy into buy a ticket for the derby you are automatically a member of CCA so it you're automatically joined and uh, are part of the uh, part of the organization well talk about uh, a derby this year uh, a lot of fish in this river system right now well there you know there's a lot of sockeye the unfortunate thing is is the chinook fishing leaves a bit to be desired you know it, it, the summer fish are, are the numbers are down quite a bit and uh, you know, they've shut most of the river down. We're, we're some of the only sections left open in the whole river. Well, let's talk about the derby itself. You've got a captain's meeting on Thursday. You've got fishing on Friday and Saturday. How does it work? Um, tomorrow evening, uh, we have a mandatory captain's meeting. that Everybody has to show up, get their, their uh, packet to go out the next day and fish. Um, Friday, fishing starts at Odark 30. Um, we have two way stations. We have a way station up at BB Bridge, and we will have one over in Hooked on Toys parking lot so that people can weigh in, you know, if they're fishing down here lower or up higher. Uh, I should I should mention that uh, this uh, derby runs between Rock Island Dam and Wells Dam. Okay. So we're fishing this, this middle section here. And uh, basically on Saturday, uh, fishing will end at 2 o'clock is the last call for weigh-in and we have a five o'clock award ceremony at the uh, eagles where everybody will show up and by that time they might have an embellishment or two and you know we'll hand out awards now you're looking for big fish individually but also for the boat right right heaviest boat weight also correct okay. and right. we pay uh, we pay five slots down uh big fish is two thousand dollar $2,000, uh, heaviest boat weight is $1,500, and they just go down gradually. Now, is this only for kings, or can they throw sockeye in there, too? Well, they, they, this is a salmon derby, yeah. so in turn, you, you can throw sockeye in. You know, the guys that, that are working on boat weight, that's where you sure. work on boat, rate, boat weight. So, it, uh, yeah, it's one of those things that it's a salmon derby, so you got to do what you got to do. Now, I know people can go to a location, but it's easier to go online to register for this. And is it still available or is it too late? It's still available until tomorrow evening at 6 p.m. Okay. I turn off the turn off the site. Sure. If you search Wenatchee Salmon Derby on anything, Facebook, on the web, you'll find where you need to go. But specifically, where do they go if they want to register? Uh, go to uh, WenatcheeSalmonDerby.com. Okay, that's easy enough. Bobby Loomis joining us here on Wake Up Wenatchee Valley with more on the Salmon Derby. Again, captain's meeting tomorrow. That cutoff to enter is tomorrow night at 6 o'clock. And then they've got fishing on Friday and Saturday. And by the way, we should mention Eagles is the location for when it all wraps up on Saturday. Correct. Yep. Okay. All right. Then get there, be there, and get out here and cool off a little bit and enjoy some salmon here in the Columbia River. I have a feeling I know what Eric's going to be doing this weekend. And don't forget the sunblock. And those are just some of the games that people are playing on this Wednesday. Happy National Hot Dog Day. Yes, German in origin. And then we took something that somebody else did and made it a little bit better because that's what we do here in America. When we think of hot dogs, you think of baseball. The owner of the St. Louis Browns was the man who brought baseball and hot dogs together. He started selling hot dogs during baseball games in 1893, and it's been a staple of ballparks ever since then. Fun facts about hot dogs, 9 billion hot dogs are consumed annually in the U.S. The, we, we love our hot dogs here, and we're, we're, it's like it. It's very much an American thing. Of those 9 billion that we eat every year, 7 billion of them are consumed between Memorial Day and Labor Day, so it's a spring and summertime treat. On the 4th of July each year alone, on that single day, Americans will eat about 160 million hot dogs. 
Last I checked, 7-Eleven sold over 100 million hot dogs last year. I've had one that, that ain't a hot dog. And the hot dog that you see pictured there has mustard on it, which is the most popular condiment for hot dogs. I don't want to sound like Mike McNaughty. You know, Mike McNaughty thinks that putting pineapple on a pizza is an aesthetic crime. I feel the same way about hot dogs. It's mustard, folks, and nothing else. No ketchup, no chili, no, you know, it's uh, mustard on a hot dog, all right? There you go. You put ketchup on a hot dog. Well, I won't get into that. 31 minutes after the hour, 67,468 people on hand, and Jolton Joe DiMaggio, the Yankee Clippers hitting streak ends at 56 games. Al Smith and Jim Bagby Jr. pitched really well. Ken Keltner, the third baseman for Cleveland, stops the Yankee Clipper. New York wins 6-5, and it still stands as an, I mean, it's not even, nobody's even come close to this. In 83 years, that was on this date in 1941. Happy birthday, Disneyland has opened its gates to the public July the 17th, 1955. 69 years ago today, it was a private event. They printed out 15,000 tickets that were printed and sent by private invitation. Then those tickets were counterfeited and actually about 30,000 people showed up. They were expecting 15,000, twice that many people showed up and so they ran out of food and drink all of it within a couple of hours it was 100 degrees in anaheim that day but the water fountains didn't work because they had a plumber strike one guy whose property ran right up against the edge of disneyland set up a ladder against a fence and charged people five bucks a pop to climb the ladder and sneak into disneyland by the way disneyland's admission on this date in 1955 was one dollar and then you paid for each attraction uh, today, just to get into the gate, it runs you $194. I've been to Disneyland. It ain't worth it. Disney World is the way to go. 45 years ago today, the 50th Major League Baseball All-Star Game takes place at the Kingdome in Seattle. The National League beats the American League 7-6. Dave Parker, the MVP. My mom and four of my siblings got to go. I was the odd man out. And 43 years ago today, on a party Saturday night at the Hyatt Regency Hotel in downtown Kansas City, two overhead walkways loaded with partygoers collapsed. One collapsed on top of the other, which then collapsed onto the dance floor below. 114 people were killed, 216 were injured on this date in 1981. Wow. Birthdays. The first multimillionaire in American history, John Jacob Astor. Born on this date in 1763, lived a long time like most rich people do. He made his original fortune in the fur trade. Then he took that fortune and made even more money smuggling opium into China. And then he took that money and invested in as much Manhattan real estate as he possibly could. When he died in 1848, he was worth $20 million, which is about $130 billion today. He said his one regret on his deathbed is that he didn't buy as much real estate in Manhattan as he possibly could. John Jacob Astor and Earl Stanley Gardner, of course, who wrote over 80 Perry Mason books at the time of his death in 1970. He was the best-selling American writer of the 20th century. He isn't anymore, but still. And in the very last episode of Perry Mason, the case of the final fade out, the judge was played by Earl Stanley Gardner. Special thanks to our platinum sponsor. That would be Alpine Air for heat and air call Alpine Air. My air conditioner has been on nonstop for two weeks. I'm told that's not a very good idea. But if it breaks down, the first people I'm going to call is Alpine Air, because they are the pros for heat and air call Alpine Air. And special thanks to our friends at Prestige Senior Living at Colonial Vista, their main campus in Wenatchee, and their campus in East Wenatchee. Mike Minotti has got an opinion coming up. He doesn't know anything about Taylor Swift, but he's got an opinion anyway. And then Joel Norman talks Apple Sox baseball. The All-Star game is tonight. Joel will join me when we come back. You're watching Wake Up in Anche Valley on the NCAA Live Channel. Caught in a conflict? Family? Workplace? Neighbor? Business? Housing disputes? 
Wenatchee Valley Dispute Resolution Center provides mediation services, a cost-effective and efficient way to provide a written resolution to disputes and issues. Plus, we offer mediation training and community education on conflict resolution and communication skills. Contact us to learn more. Apple Valley Honda is bringing the future of driving to you. Introducing the all-new, all-electric Honda Prologue EV. Say goodbye to gas stations and hello to a whisper-quiet ride in zero emissions. The wait is over. Finally, a local option for a quality EV from a brand with a track record of exceptional quality and reliability. Experience the Honda Prologue EV for yourself at family-owned Apple Valley Honda. Stay close to home and visit us at Apple Valley Honda today for the life you live. Are you hungry enough to eat the sand out of a rhinoceros? I know how you feel. Come on out to Blueberry Hills, you'll have a great time. We've got excellent food, a feed on the furniture kind of experience, and we won't hustle you out of your table. If you want a real farm experience, make a trek to Manson to Blueberry Hills, where you sit, you pick, you eat, and you visit. So come on out and see what all the fuss is about. Blueberry Hills in Manson, it's where the world is coming to. This is Mike, Mad Dog Magnati, and everybody is entitled to my opinion. Now look, so I wouldn't know Taylor Swift if I bumped into her on the street. And literally, if I've ever heard any of her songs, I'm clueless. But I've seen a number of people recently, though, posting on Facebook that based on some of her lyrics on her new album, Swift mocks Christianity and is satanic. <laughs> Well, having some mild interest in the activities of the Prince of Darkness, I briefly perused Miss Swift's lyrics, and I had to conclude that if I wanted to be offended, I really had to work at it. However, I have to admit that somewhat, I'm somewhat obtuse, yeah, I know, I know, but, but if Miss Swift is mocking Christianity, maybe her attitude is motivated more by some of the behavior of some Christians and not by, uh, what's his name, that other guy. This is Mike Mad Dog Magnati, and that's my opinion. <laughs> Bring the whole family up to Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house in historic downtown Chelan. Applewood smoked brisket, street style tacos, and our award-winning barbecue rubs and sauces. Our meals pair perfectly with our exciting lineup of craft ales, made right here in Chelan. We've got room for big groups, or give us a call for catering. So grab the kids and check out the fun at Stormy Mountain Brewing and local public house located in the heart of Chelan. Now there are even more reasons to meet at the Pibus Market. Outdoor dining and tastings. The fabulous Farmer's Market. Saturday Artisans on the concourse and your favorites all week long. No matter the reason, it's always time to meet at the Pibus Market. Pibus Market, where community meets. Imagine. A science project being done on the kitchen table. Feel the excitement on Christmas morning as the kids race down the stairs to form memories that cannot be erased. Listen for the laughter coming from the next room. Put your family in a new home to make these visions become reality with Coldwell Banker Cascade. Use the move meter entering two cities and see how a potential move scores based on the cost of living and other factors. Make your dream place a reality with Coldwell Banker Cascade today. Welcome back to the program. It is the all-star break this week for the West Coast League. Some teams are playing. We'll get to that in a little bit, but everybody will be gathering later on today, Wednesday night at Joe Martin Field in Bellingham for the annual all-star game. So this is the longest break between games for the Wenatchee Apple Sox all year. In fact, it's also the longest uh, run between games that count for the Wenatchee Apple Sox because over the weekend they played on the the collegiate, I'm sorry, Joel, what was the name? I always forget the name of the damn team. The Cascade Collegiate League Showcase Team. Cascade Collegiate League Showcase Team. Basically the Harlem Globetrotters of Northwest Collegiate Baseball. And um, 
two easy victories. Joel Norman, by the way, is joining me. I don't know if you've met him or not. He hasn't been on the show before. Uh, two kind of fun games, a, a step yeah. away from, from league action. Mitch himself, Mitch Darlington, inserted himself in the lineup on Sunday. I mean, why not? The games don't count. Mm -hmm. And yet uh, it's still important for these guys to play non-league games uh, on on Saturday and Sunday, just to you know keep keep your skills sharp. And yeah, you know I mean, the games they, both. Uh, you know, we, we you kind of go into a lot of non-league games knowing, hey, if we just take care of business, we'll win. Granted, that doesn't always happen. We went three and one in non-league games this year, but things went according to plan. Let's say this past weekend, seven pitchers pitched on Saturday. We combined to shut out the CCL seven to nothing in that game. Kind of business as usual. Good quality game. The bash just kind of came to play the next day, and you know that stuff's going to happen. You know, we win 21 to 5 on Sunday's game, and it was one of those games where, you know, Mitch decided, hey, you know, with the way things are going, everyone on our team, when they step up to the plate, pretty much is getting a hit right now. Let's have a little fun here, the 7th and 8th innings. David James actually pinch hit in the 7th inning, and he had an RBI single, believe it or not. <laughs> it was just, it was one of those things where you catch yourself. My, I was sitting there watching the game, it's was like, well, what can you say now? Like, it's, it's the deficit is growing. We're just kind of having fun at this point, and it was, it was neat. We got to see Quincy Vaster and Evan Canfield also bat. Quincy, you could tell, and he, what was funny was he stepped out on deck in the 8th inning. And he was on with the broadcast with me the night before. So, and we were talking a little bit about, you know, getting into a game at some point. He kept thinking, oh, you know, I think I've got a chance here soon. And he gets on deck, and I kind of look over, and I, you know, I tilt my head, and I go, oh, boy. And then right <laughs> as I kind of tilt my head, he looks up at me, and he's smiling, and he's like, and you can see him being like, here we go. <laughs> so it was, it was a fun way to do it. And, and Mitch coming in was hysterical because he's wearing the number 11 jersey, and usually that's Roberto Gonzalez. We, exactly. We knew Roberto was not going to be playing this past week, and he's, he's still kind of dealing with a banged-up hand. So just want to give him a, a full week off. So I see number 11 on deck, and everyone in our press box is, and you know how that is, it's a mad scramble sometimes. And, and it's a pretty crowded up there. Yeah, hey, who's coming into the game? I don't have this guy on my roster sheet. I, wait, how is that not Gonzalez? You said he's number 11. And then right before I think I went on air, I went, hey, guys, that's Mitch. <laughs> and then I'm back on, and, it's, and they're all just laughing. And it's like, and he comes up to the plate, takes a couple pitches, swings and misses at one. And I took off the headset for a sec, and I looked at Crichton, our, our great public address announcer. I said, make sure to announce him, too, because we were all so caught up and just sure. laughing from the moment. It's like, actually let people know in case they didn't know it was Mitch hitting. So he, uh, he had a tough at bat. He struck out of that one. Um, and then we batter later, Xander Orhudos comes up, and he doubles down the left field line. Like he's our hitting coach, by the way. Yeah, yeah, just like it's like two years ago, and he's doing what he did that summer. But it, it was fun to see those guys kind of come in and inject a little excitement to the team. You know. We mentioned Evan Canfield and Quincy Vassar, and then what better way to end the game with a double play ball up the middle? Mitch gets it, the shortstop steps on second, fires to who else but Quincy Vassar at first base. When Mitch played at Cashmere High, won a state championship, I think. Mm -hmm. Was he a shortstop? Is that was yeah, that, that his natural that. position? Okay. Yeah, yeah, he's familiar with that. Second base as well. I mean, he, he goes out there a lot of times during batting practice, and he'll just help take guys take ground balls. He'll feed guys at the bag and. You know, Mitch is a, he's a serious athlete, in all seriousness. Like, I mean, it was, it's one of those things where it, it's a reminder of how tough it is to hit a baseball and be part of a baseball game when you, you coach it and you aren't usually out there to jump right back in like that. But it was, um, it was neat to see them doing that. I'm sure that's something that was cool for him. Mitch has always talked to me about how he wished he could have played for the Apple Sox, like when he was in college. It just never quite worked out. And he always talks about how it's a dream for him coaching the team. So I know that that had to be pretty cool for him, helping to lock up a win on Sunday. And I gave the Cascade Collegiate team a, a bad time. These guys are great because they're baseball lifers. They're, 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 they're driving their own cars. They have no home field. They, they're basically nomads. They travel mm -hmm. from, from town to town on weekends. They, 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 they take care of their own expenses. And all these guys want to do is play is play baseball. Absolutely. And that's all they want to do. And Absolutely. that's and, that, and they're they're doing they have every game is on the road. They have no home games. That's kind of cool. It is. You know, the the Cascade Collegiate League was started in 2019 and the big point that their head their commissioner, I should say, Ben Kruger, who's the skipper over at Yakima Valley College, the big thing he was trying to push with them is we want guys to start in this league and go up to the West Coast League and then see where their careers go from there. So, he understands the pipeline 
that his league is in. And it's neat because, like we said, these guys get to go out, they get to compete against West Coast League teams. And frankly, Dan, you know, the earlier in a season that they face a WCL team, the more likely that team is to sign a player from them. So those games, even though they get a little bit ugly, and I think I see fans sometimes roll their eyes when they see them on the schedule, I always tell them, I say, you know, watch the game closely, though, because there's guys there who might be on the Apple Sox pretty soon. It's happened before. I printed up copious notes that are in the printer. So I'm going to have to wing some of this, specifically the list of our now five Apple Sox players who are going to be in Bellingham tonight for the All-Star Game. And those five are, I'm putting you on the spot, do you remember? No, I do remember. Garrett Ahern was the most recent one added on Sunday. Really exciting to have him joining Evan Canfield, Max Hartman, Jonathan Fitz, and Quincy Vassar. Well, you know, I, I was joking with you before we went on. I was a little salty at first when I saw the All-Star list and I said, okay, I'm going to add you with four players, Edmonton with five, Bellingham with six, and it's like, wait a second, let's yeah. check those standings from the first half. Who won the division? But it's nice that we got another one. We've got the same amount as Edmonton now. Bellingham naturally got another player added, so they've got seven. But my point is it's a talented division, so I understand where that comes. Bellingham's the host city, too, so it's easier to just pull from those guys who don't have to necessarily travel for this game now. So it's an honor for us, though, to be sending five players because – this is a, a, going to be. This is one of those crowded All-Star games. You've got 16 teams vying to send players there, and we have five going. Some teams have one or two, three, some of them. But this is really cool. I'm, I'm so glad for Garrett Ahern that he got added too, because we we've been joking about it lately. The coaching staff and I. Garrett's kind of been our stopper. He's mm -hmm. had five starts this season, and four of those times that he has started, it's been right after a loss. We've won every game he's pitched. It's one of those things where, you know, Jose always says to me, Jose Oglesby, our owner, he always says, Joel, you know, momentum is today's starting pitcher. And for us, there's been a lot of times this season where we've lost the game and it's like, okay, but Garrett Ahern starts tomorrow, so we've got a chance to win. And it's going to be neat to see that. I know he's really excited to be heading to the All-Star game. All of those guys are. It's, it's incredible that we're, we can say out loud that, that game is going to be televised on MLB Network. You know, I, I'm looking forward to sitting down tonight and watching this game. and just, I'm watching it, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. And just realize, it's like, wow, these guys are, you know, this is on high def. This is, you know, in action, getting a chance to maybe get a little extra exposure, you know? Because the thing I keep telling the players is you don't know who's going to be at this game. You don't know what scout, what connection could be there. You might stumble into the right person. And it's just, it's an excellent showcase opportunity. And, you know, I tip my cap to the league owners as well as Commissioner Rob Nyer for making this happen because this is one of those efforts that really helps elevate the status of the West Coast League. The West league. Coast League All-Star Game is going to be essentially on national television. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and yeah. even if you don't have MLB Network, you can still right. watch it tonight. MLB TV, if you have a subscription, which I know you do, I mm -hmm. do as well. But MLB.com is actually going to have the game. So whether you pay for anything with Major League it's Baseball, free. you can watch this game tonight. With the exception of the pitchers, uh, all the position players are eligible to play tonight? Yeah, we know that uh, Max Harmon and Jonathan Fitz are eligible to play. Evan Canfield has expressed interest that he could pitch. I would put that at probably less than 50-50. I don't think he will go, just to be safe, unfortunately. I know he really wants to. But, I, you know, I hope Quincy Vassar and Garrett Ayer get a shot. I think both of them will get into this game at some point. And, you know, I joked with both of them. I said, are you going to request that Fitz will be your personal catcher when you get in? So maybe they'll go back-to-back -back innings when Fitz is already in the field. The boys uh, who aren't going to Bellingham this week and today, and I believe, uh, I'm sorry, Monday and Tuesday, it was camp day. Mm -hmm. So there, there are still some Apple Sox in town. And then what was Mitch's instructions to the guys between now and Yakima Valley on Friday night? Because they now have a considerable amount of downtime. Biggest one of the season. Just stay in shape. Don't, do, don't be stupid. The biggest thing was, yeah, get some rest. Yeah. You know, make sure that you guys do what you have to do to be ready to go Friday. Because Yakima comes into town. It's a team we lost 2-3-2 or three, two earlier this season. We've only lost four series this season, so you better believe the guys remember that. So it's just about getting this time off. You know, recharge the batteries, get out of the sun as much as possible, or, you know, limit the time in the sun. I know some guys are going to want to go out to, you know, some to go out in the water, go fishing and whatnot, but to also get some time just inside, enjoy a little air conditioning, and then be ready to go this weekend. You know, the way Mitch set up the pitching staff this past weekend against the CCL Showcase was, I thought, really well done because he lined it up where pretty much every pitcher threw. Just about everyone got some action. That included Quincy. He started on Saturday, just got one inning of work, just a nice little tune-up for him before the All-Star game. I think everyone threw except for David James and Garrett Ayer, now that I think about it. So that was just a way to almost give guys a bullpen session, but in live game action with live hitters. And 
I think for the most part, everyone did pretty well. And you know, they got the reps they needed, and now shut it down for a few days, and we started back up again on Friday. And a lot of guys like the work. They said, you know, give me, give me two, three innings just to oh, yeah. make sure I know what I'm doing for a living. So yeah. they have no problems with that. No, not yeah. at all. And frankly, I think it was a good way to keep everyone engaged. Sometimes these non-league games, there are certain players you kind of know, okay, I'm not playing in this one, you know, what am I going to do all day? And this worked out well for them, where it got everyone engaged in the action, where it was, okay, you're up in the sixth inning, we've got you in the third, you're going the first couple innings, and you go from there. So it, it was it was neat to see guys get those chances, and for me, it's just nice to get to see a chance, everyone see everyone pitch, because there are some stretches you go through where it's like, okay, we haven't seen him in a while, he's been banged up, or he's been struggling, and these non-league games are that opportunity. Just get out there, go make a mistake. You know, give up something. We, we learned on Saturday night that our shortstop, Jace Hampson, can throw 94 on the bump. Yeah. I don't know if anyone knew that prior to that game. It, and it's just... Yeah, but then he had to call him home after the game and said, guess what, Mom? I got benched in favor of the coach. <laughs> exactly. So, you know, there's that. It yeah, you know, did uh, get sub, subbed out there, but that. But, hey, he might have a future on the mound now. That's true. So it's, it's neat to see that kind of stuff, and that's what the non-league games are for. The standings for the second half of the West Coast League's Northern Division is totally cattywampus. Uh, Bellingham, and this is going into to Monday's games, Bellingham, Wenatchee, Kelowna, 5-4, and four. Nanaimo, Port Angeles, 4-4, four and four. Edmonton, Victoria, Kamloops, 4-5. and five. So there's one game separating first place and last place. Everybody is either 5-4, and 4-4, four, four and 4-5 four, four and five going into Monday night's game. Does anybody not want to win the second half? Well, I know the, we do. This is the part where I say I'm glad we won the first half yeah. already. You know, we've already locked up a playoff spot, but you know, I keep telling people the important thing with the second half for us is we still, if not win it, have the second best record because that probably gives us the top overall record in the North Division. And if we have the best overall record, we've got home field advantage for at least the North Division playoffs and then hopefully for the entire thing if we can advance there. But, you know, Corvallis has been struggling a little bit and I know a lot of teams have their eyes on that. We've seen the way they've been playing and teams know, I mean, they know the importance of you host that West Coast League Championship game, it absolutely makes a difference. In a one game do or die, sure. the team who bats last, not that they've ever had to in that game, but that's just an advantage you really want to have. Yeah, the South is another story altogether. Ridgefield is undefeated yeah. in the second half of the season. They're nine and one. The Pickles are right behind them. Uh, I'm sorry, the, the Raptors are nine and zero. Oh, the Pickles are nine and one. Corvallis is four and three. We talked about this yeah. last week. Corvallis. Winners of seven straight uh, West Coast League championships are, are are gettable this year. I think so too. I think there's a little bit of, there's some dents in their armor when I look at that team. Is I'm not saying that they won't still win it, but I'm saying that if the right team faces them on the right day, they've got a good shot. And that's something that's fun right now. We are kind of planning our pitching staff for the playoffs already. We're lining things up to see which guys are going to go in which situations. Some guys are on innings limits and. You know, Garrett Ahern was one of those guys. Coaching staff has talked with him, and they've said, you know, hey, you know, we know we've got you on an innings limit, but we want to keep you here all summer. So here's how your outings are going to go. He threw a season high five and two thirds innings last Wednesday. I don't know if he'll go that deep until the playoffs at this point. He may or may not, but this is a nice way of saving some arms, making sure we have them. Because last year, he, uh, Mitch Darlington and Mike Callia, they kind of talked about it after the season. They looked back and they said, you know, we had Toby Haar on an innings limit, the guy who was heading to Central Arizona from Kansas, best pitcher all season, and we didn't have him pitch in August. So they thought we need to manage that kind of stuff to have that guy for the postseason because he didn't have he didn't have that direct shutdown date. He was more of an innings limit. When he hits that limit, he's done. So they're trying to monitor that with a guy like Ahern so they can maximize the time with him as well. Innings or pitches? Because that's two different things innings. entirely. Innings. Innings okay. limit. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm not sure what it is exactly, yeah. but he is on an innings limit. Rosters. Uh, still guys coming and going. I know mm -hmm. a couple of guys played last night or, or, or Sunday night, and then they, they're, they're gone. Mm -hmm. Some other guys coming in. Where are we on the roster right now? Yeah, J.D. Goodcase pitched his last game on Sunday. You know, it was a fun summer watching him. Great personality. You know, I was even talking, Mitch was saying his host family sent over a really nice email to Mitch. Just saying oh, yeah, the Nelsons are great. Yeah, just yeah. how much they loved having well, Shelly J.D. Well, Shelly's awesome. Kevin, anyway. <laughs> they loved hosting J.D., and we, and we obviously thank them as well for doing so. But he's finished up. Antonio Gianni left before the weekend as well. He was, he was already planning to, sh to shut it down about mid-July anyway. So a couple of the guys out there, and a couple of guys have come in. You know, we knew Matthew Henning was going to be coming in in mid-July and came in, had a pretty nice game on Sunday. Sunday with the four runs driven in and the fun thing with him is he's a two-way player as well we also added Jace Hampson over the weekend who I mentioned earlier you know a guy who can throw 94 on the bump would look 
looking at him to potentially be our everyday shortstop. It's kind of still a battle between him and Jake Larson, but that's that position is really solidifying itself. And, you know, Dan, I won't spoil it, but there will be a couple guys coming in this weekend too. And there were a couple names when, when I did the research on them, I kind of realized, I was like, wow, we are we are really in it to win it right now. Like Mitch is not waiting another year. He is doing everything he can to add to this year's team. And we'll have a few new faces, but I guarantee these are going to be big contributors. Yakima Valley Pippins are in town this weekend for games Friday and Saturday. It's a long break, and we're done with non-league games, right? It's all, all league up. all the rest of the way. So. Yep. So there you go. It is a Wenatchee Apple Sox. Real quickly, before I cut you loose, here's my Marco Gonzalez. Oh, yeah. Bobblehead doll. Marco, Marco is back. He's with your Pirates. Yes, he is. As he, a matter of fact. Yeah. We need to mention that real quick. He's been out, of course, for quite some time. Pitched on Friday. And he yeah. actually looked pretty good. I was yeah. actually watching that because we didn't play that night. And Marco looked really good. And it was fun to see him. And, you know, I... It's hard not to root for that guy. You know, met him a couple times. Just a really good person. And, we're, you know, we're so proud he played for the Apple Sox, too. And he's with that. Joel is, he's a Pirates fan. Yes. So he's got a lot of, a little bit of bias there. He's so. got a lot of issues, Joel does, being a Pirates <laughs> fan. Uh, go Apple Sox. Again, uh, Yakima Valley tonight. Uh, get your tickets to WenatcheeAppleSox.com. All the promotions are there as well. And we're looking now, we're scheduled right now, as we sit, to be broadcasting the game Friday night. Again, a lot of this is weather related. Our equipment simply can't handle oppressive heat. It just says I'm, it gets real punky and turns itself yep, off. And totally understand. That's never any good at all. But anyway, Joel Norman, it's good to see Nice meeting you, by the way. Nice to meet you. For yeah, the, the beard's looking good, by the way. Thank you. Storm and Joel Norman, the broadcasting voice of the Wenatchee Apple Sox, and we will be right back. It's vacation season. While a trip to Hawaii sounds great, we know what you really want is an inflation vacation. That's why Abby's feeds a group of four to six people for less than 26 bucks. Enjoy an inflation vacation at Abby's. You can be a superhero tonight and treat your family to Abby's famous hometown hero. This giant features our classic pepperoni, tasty Italian sausage, and crisp green peppers all layered together for a legendary feast. Don't miss this July special pizza at a very special price. Here's your coffee, that'll be five dollars. Oh, thanks. Oh, it's only five dollars. Oh, I like paying double. <laughs> Why? I've always paid more. You wouldn't pay double for coffee. So don't pay double on your heating bill. Cut your heating bills by up to half when you switch to a heat pump or ductless mini split and get cash back from Chelan PUD plus federal tax credits. Learn more at chelanpud.org slash save. Introducing Wenatchee's Riverfront District. Call ahead to the Cheesemonger in the Pipus Public Market for gourmet cheese trays for your event or dinner party. Imported or domestic cheese, salami, olives, and more entertain your guests with the best from the Cheesemonger. Visit the Wenatchee Riverfront District for fun, food, and entertainment. All right, before we get to the forecast, one more friendly reminder, it's Winning Wednesday, a $50 gift card to the Anvil Sandwich Company on Riverside Drive, right along the river in Wenatchee. It's up for grabs, 50 bucks worth of sandwiches, and they're a good winner. At ncwlife.com, send in your email. That's how you have to do it. Winner at ncwlife.com is the email address. Employees of local Telecommunications, communications, solely in broadcasting, and their media families are not eligible. Sorry, Jefferson. We'll do the drawing tomorrow. Red flag warning between now and tomorrow night. We don't like that. The oppressive heat continues. Here's your forecast from the National Weather Service. How about a high of, oh, I don't know, 102, 103? Does that sound about right for you? Whew. Now, there is the slightest chance of a dry thunderstorm, which means a lightning strike, but no precipitation associated with it. That isn't good. That upper level ridge is still sitting over northwest Montana, spinning around clockwise and sending all that hot air right up our way, which is why we have this incredible heat wave going on. 104 Thursday, close to a record high. Saturday, 105 is the forecast high. Our record high is 105 on that date. Sunday, our forecast high is 107. Our record high on Sunday is 105, so we're going to be breaking some more records, it looks like. Before this heat wave is over, we finally get a little bit of relief, by the way, Tuesday 
and Wednesday of next week, but that's till then. Have a great Wednesday. We'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.